Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. I'm with Lance Valentine from Teach and Fishing, and that's what we want to talk about okay. today is learning fishing. Yeah. And there's so many different places to go now to learn really kind of the, the big details. And I think that's where a lot of people go from being kind of successful to really, really successful right. is finding those details. Tell us a little bit about what Teach and Fishing is and, and how it works. So what we did at Teach and Fishing is, is we're, we're, we've created an umbrella where we can bring all kinds of good quality fishing information into one spot. The genesis of it was my Walleye 101 seminar series that I started back in the 90s and it kind of grew and grew and grew. Uh, but now we need to take the way we teach for walleye fishing and kind of take it to everybody that fishes because a lot of the stuff is exactly the same. But when you say walleye 101, it's kind of hard to get a salmon fisherman to listen. So we created the teaching fishing umbrella to kind of bring people all into one spot. So what we're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a two times a month, a kind of a TV show format. where We're going to talk very, very specific about a specific location, presentation and time of year with, with a guest. That's going to be twice a, twice a uh, twice a month. Uh, we're going to do a live Q&A at the end of the month so we can wrap up what those guests talked about and people can interact with us on Facebook. We do a live pro chat. Myself and a couple other captains sit down and we just kind of ramble on for an hour about what's going on in the fishing world and what kind of people should expect the time of year we're talking. Uh, podcasts um, uh, that, that we do. Podcasts like this we're going to be able to share with our guys. Uh, on our website we have a resource center. So we talk a lot about pre-trip planning, right? Getting ready. You said it earlier when we were talking if you go deer hunting, you just don't get up opening day, drive out in the woods, shut your door and go, wow, where's the deer, right? But that's how guys fish. Mm -hmm. So we put a resource center together where guys can get buoy data. They can see the currents and the winds for the last couple of days. Uh, there's a Great Lakes coastal forecasting here on the Great Lakes, which on all five of the Great Lakes, surface current, surface wind, wave height, water temperature for up to five days back and up to four days forward. So I can sit here on Friday because what most people do when they plan for a fishing trip is they get up Friday night or Saturday morning, they go, where's the wind? And they see a forecast Saturday morning for uh, southwest 5 to 10. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. They get on the lake and there's two foot wave. Because what they didn't do is go back and look that on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it blew 25 from the northeast. They don't take enough time to look at what's happening. And just like anything, hunting or whatever it is, the more stable the weather is, the better the fishing is going to be. So you can't just look at weather as today, mm -hmm. you have to look at it as how today compares to what it was. And that's where all these little resources come in, right? Um, using the subsurface current, using the fish hawk, all that stuff is part of the puzzle that nobody looks at. Most guys get up Saturday, grab a cup of coffee, stop at the bait shop, what's the first thing they ask? What are they biting on? Mm -hmm. They buy more crap they don't need and they have no idea where to put it. Instead of putting the time in, they actually plan a little bit and get on the right fish. So how should they put that plan together if they're going to go fishing? On Great Saturday? question. So what I like to do is I like to start usually Tuesday night or Wednesday. And what I'll do is I'll pick wherever I'm, wherever I think I'm going to go, and I will start to check a couple things. Surface currents, speed and direction, wind speed and direction, wave height and direction, because that's a big deal. And then if I can find it, surface currents. So i got subsurface currents and surface currents, which aren't the same, mm -hmm. right? And then obviously water temperature. And I'll start to track that over the course of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and as I get closer to Friday, I can kind of see what Saturday is going to be. The more consistent Saturday is, the longer the weather's been the same, here's what I can assume. The fish are going to be tightly grouped together, they're going to be off the bottom, they're going to be active. I can go fast, I can catch them. If that weather Saturday is going to be different than what it has been, or the current direction is going to be different, or the wave height is different, or the uh, wind's direction or speed changes, now I know, and the, the closer the change is to Saturday, and the more the change is closer to Saturday, the fish are going to be less active. I may have to go into the weeds and cast them for some fish. I may have to find fish hunkered down in the rocks. I may have to not go out open water trolling because those open water fish aren't going to be active and aggressive. I may have to adjust my technique. So having all of that data and just really looking at consistency, the more consistent, the more active the fish are going to be, the less consistent the weather, the less active they're going to be. That helps me kind of eliminate, am I going to go trolling today or going to go casting today? I've already eliminated half of the water I'm going to fish. I'm already on the right path. So I usually start Tuesday for a fishing trip and kind of get ready for Saturday. By the time Saturday comes around, I know what I've got. I've got a plan in my head on where I should be fishing, what the fish should be doing. I usually have two or three ideas. And if those don't work, then I have good data. I have no answers. Mm -hmm. The answer is no, but at least I know these three things didn't work. Then it's on to what is the next thing. So having all that data ahead of time makes a huge difference. Yeah, we're here at your seminar in Dunkirk uh, this weekend. That's kind of how we got met. Right, how right. we met up here. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I noticed right away when we walked in the door 
is the charts and the logs that, that you're really pushing people to do. Why is that data and, and holding that stuff and, and, and taking a look at it, retaining it, why is that important? So I believe, like anybody who spends any time in the outdoors hunting any creature in its natural environment, animals are creatures of habit. If a set of environmental conditions is the same today as it was five years ago, the fish are going to do exactly the same thing. Every time you catch a fish, if you record a waypoint, you record that location, you record what you did to catch that fish, how deep, how fast, what the currents were, what the weather was, what the cloud cover was, what color lure you used, how fast were you going, all of those things. You record all that stuff for every fish. Now you start to build a log. So you can go back and go, man, you should get on the water and go, okay, this weekend is going to be just like it was three years ago when we were on vacation. When you go back, you grab your logs from three years ago, I guarantee you to a pretty good certainty, those fish are gonna be in the same place doing pretty much the same thing. Too many guys get caught in the calendar. It's the first week of September, the fish should be, well, look it. I guarantee you, you go to the same place the exact same day every year, the water temperature is gonna vary, especially if it's a spring or fall trip, water temperature may vary 20 degrees, mm -hmm. right? Over those five, six years. Fish aren't in the same place. They don't listen to our calendar, they listen to the environmental calendar. So if you understand the conditions and what happened under those conditions and where and how you caught fish before, you can go back to those conditions again, grab that data, and I bet you you've got a really good place to start your fishing even two, three, four, five years later. We've talked a lot about some online resources, but we're here in Dunkirk yep. and we're here at this seminar. Can you just tell us a little bit about why, why maybe somebody should invest in coming to something like this? Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, we feel very strongly about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think what guys miss is, is anglers are too quick to look for the next new thing, right? They're too quick for the new lure, the new color, whatever it is. We teach the foundations. There are things you need to understand before you can become a good angler. You have to understand the kind of bait fish that live in your lake and where it goes. So if you go where the bait is, you're gonna catch fish. Well, smelt don't act like shiners, don't act like shad, don't act like gobies, they're all different. So you have to understand that as a foundation. Uh, we teach an eight step process of catching fish. There's eight steps in hierarchical order of what's most important. Uh, location, depth of water, depth of the fish, you know where you put your lure, how deep your lures go, then lure speed, size, shape, action, and color in that order of importance. That's a great foundation. You can't catch fish with the right lure if you're not in the right spot. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to what's important and keep it important. Uh, we're going to teach a little bit later uh, tomorrow, we're going to teach pattern fishing, how to take that information on the water, because every time if you, if you pay attention to those eight steps and you write them down, you catch three fish, you're gonna have steps that are the same. You know you've got that. You're gonna have steps that are different. Well, now you know you haven't paid enough attention to how fast you go. Maybe you catch fish from two to three miles an hour. You haven't got the speed thing dialed in yet. So we teach people how to take that information, lay a good foundation, and actually make good decisions on the water. The lures will come, right? Most guys that are listening or watching, they've got enough fish and stuff in their boat. Mm -hmm. Stop buying more fish and stuff. Learn where to put it. Learn to use your sonar. Learn to understand the process of pattern fishing and how to make good decisions on the water and then learn the planning part so you have a good plan when you hit the water, that's gonna catch you more fish than ever buying the new custom color crankbait. What if a guy goes on the water, hits a couple fish right away, the temptation I think is always to be yeah. like, let's, let's go everything with that. Yep. What, what should they do? And that's one of the things we talk about. We call, in, in our seminar jargon, we call it never settle. So what I like guys to do is once they figure out those, those top three things, location, how deep the water, and, and how deep the fish are, so now you know where you put your baits. I want them to put multiple things there. So let's say they caught a fish on a uh, three inch skinny crankbait. I want them to put a five inch fat crankbait at that same location at the same depth. I want them to put a spoon in that same location. Uh, maybe I want them to run, if they're, if they're running at the right speed, maybe a crawler harness. So instead of six of the same thing in different colors, I want six different baits because now what you've done, you know the fi you're fishing over the fish, mm -hmm. you know they're aggressive, you know they're active. Now you've given them six choices because sometimes that bait we catch our first one or two fish on isn't the best bait for the day. There may be something completely different. So I usually try to, so a great example, uh, Deep Little Ripper is a little three inch, you know, skinny long, you know, skinny bait, three inches long. If I catch a fish on that, my first response is to put out a six or seven inch bait on the other side of the boat. So now I've given two different profiles, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'll catch two or three more fish on the little one. Now I know I need to stay, now I've just, I've just eliminated some size things now I can go through my box and put shad style crankbaits that same size. I can pick a spoon that same size. I've kind of dialed in the size, but I'm not giving them different options. Uh, going through fish one time, catching fish and going back a different speed. Can you catch more or bigger fish a little bit faster, a little bit slower? Adjusting your speed is easy. 
uh, putting different style divers. We're out here in Dunkirk and we, we have to get down 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet. Well, a dipsy diver makes your lure look different than running that same lure at the same depth behind a lead core. So all those different options. I want you, once you figure out where the fish are and how deep you need to be, I want you to put multiple stuff in there. And then if you catch three or four more fish, you're gonna be able to take some stuff out and say, okay, I don't need to worry about this today because they're not gonna bite that. They like this kind of stuff. That's where five fish days turn into 10 fish days, 10 fish days turn into 20 fish days, is giving the fish a choice. Let them tell you what they want. Because they'll definitely tell you. They'll tell you yes or they'll tell you no. No is okay. Mm -hmm. You just know you don't need to worry about that stuff anymore. Too many guys get a yes, and that's all they want to do is just catch those yes fish instead of getting to the best answer. So you're just proving yourself wrong. Exactly. Essentially what you're that's doing. That's what I try to do. I try to prove that whatever I did first isn't right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And sometimes you come back to it and it is the best thing and away you go. Um, you know, I told the story in the seminar today. You know, I was out with a guy. We were setting lines. And before we get all of our lines set, we caught a fish on a lure. And I said to him when he reeled it in, we took it off. I said, we got to be careful. We don't let that fish fool us. We caught 20 more fish that day, 21 total, never caught another fish on that lure. Most guys' instinct would have been, we didn't have all our rods in the water. Most guys' instinct would have been, oh, I got two more rods to put out. I'm going to put that lure on there, put it back out there. So our 21 fish day might have been a four fish day, yeah. right? And we had a great day because we kept changing and figured out that that wasn't what the fish wanted. The fish told us that's not what they wanted. And we actually got to the right answer and got more fish that day. You're using the boat as a classroom. Using the boat as a classroom every time I go out. <laughs> every, even when it's just me, yeah. right? Just, just learning. And that's, that's a, the other great thing about one of these events, you know, uh, Trevor's here from Fish Shock, so we get a chance to talk about subsurface currents and how it works and how it really affects your fishing. Uh, Jeff Miller from Trackstack and how, you know, people look at rod holders and just go, I just need a place to hold my rod. No, you don't. Rod holder placement and how you set your rod, that's a huge part of success, especially if you're going to run inline planer boards. It's a huge part of your success is having the rod, the boat rigged properly. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys that fish different here, so you're going to get all kinds of ideas. We're sharing information between the students both on and off the water. All of this data coming into one place for four days, mm -hmm. man, you get a lot of teaching. You, got, you, you get a lot of information that you need to decipher. And that's the beauty of this thing. A lot of people that love to fish, they're going to both bring experience, inexperience, right answers and wrong answers to one spot. We can all sort through it together. And we give the guys the tools to kind of sort through that information so the next time they're on their boat, they can make better decisions. Sure. So you're basically using your friends as a resource too. And that's what we're talking about resources. Yeah. And that's something I think is really important to get somebody that you trust and somebody you can work with and you can share information. Absolutely. And, and if you're going to do that, try to find somebody who doesn't fish like you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, if, you control, if you're if you really good at fishing crawler harnesses, find somebody that's good at crankbaits. Find a good spoon fishing guy. Now there's your group. Now everybody's doing something different. Now you can really get some answers. Um, I fish with uh, five different charter captains up on Saginaw Bay. I have five guys that I talk to religiously five or six times over the course of a five-hour trip. We talk to each other every day. All of our trips start at seven o'clock. We check in at 8.15. And what it, it took me four or five years to get them to understand, because they were kind of, well, I don't want to tell you what I'm doing because I don't want you to come to me. I'm like, look, I don't need to know what you're doing. I don't need to know where you are. If I call up my buddy Dick at 8.15 and he's got 11 and I've got three, mm -hmm. I know that I'm not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So my first question, Dick, is not where are you? How deep are you fishing? Because mm -hmm. if I'm in seven and he's in 21, Instantly, my thought is, okay, where's my closest 21 feet of water? I don't need to go to Dick's Fish. I just need to get in the right depth, right? right? So having that process, then we check in again about 10 o'clock. Okay, well, Dick's got 24, or we've got six. Okay, we got to get fired up here. Something's not right. So sometimes having information like that helps you determine, or I, I'll say I called Dick at, uh, at, at 10 o'clock, and he's got four, and I got four. And we're, we're 12 miles apart. Mm -hmm. I know I don't need to worry about moving because the bite isn't happening anywhere. Now you talk to the other four guys, you got six guys that all got four or five fish. They're all fishing different spots in different ways. Now I know that what I'm doing doesn't matter. I just need to grind on my fish, right? So having those friends and getting that information consistently and not necessarily just when you catch fish. Everybody wants to write down on a, a catch report sheet or a fishing journal when they caught them. Mm -hmm. I want you to write down on a bad day. Let's say you go fishing, you catch one fish in nine hours. I still want you to fill all the weather conditions. I still want you to write down what you did. Because what I want you to do is the next time the weather conditions are the same, don't do this. <laughs> exactly. right? You just prove this doesn't work under these conditions. Most guys are afraid of a negative fishing report. right? We, we still want guys to share, even if it's a negative or a, a bad day, because now we know what not to do if these conditions happen again. And that's all part of the process that we try to teach at these, at these events. Awesome. 
for people who want to know more about what you do and how it works, how do they find you? Uh, teachinfishing.com uh, with no G's, T-E-A-C-H-I-N-F-I-S-H-I-N.com. That's our website. And then we also have a Facebook page, the same thing, Teaching Space Fishing. Uh, they can keep track of everything we're doing there. We've got seminars and DVDs and more. we do three of these a year all around the, the country. Uh, we're at all kinds of different shows doing seminars, all kinds of things. We've got a podcast. It, we've got a lot of stuff going on at Teaching. This is my full-time job. This is what I do. Yep. So we take teaching fishing pretty darn serious. And we're talking resources. You're a great resource. There's lots of great yep. resources out there. So people really shouldn't be going out on the water blind anymore. With the, you know, with out. Facebook, there's no reason to not have a fishing report. And I, I get I get so frustrated. You know, we have a, a public Facebook page that people, we have about 12,000 people on there and people share fishing information. And inevitably, every Friday night, 4.30, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, we're the fish bite on Saginaw Bay. There's been 30 Saginaw Bay reports in the last three days, yeah. right? But it's easier just to ask instead of search. And I kind of, you know, I bang my head low. Guys, look at nobody is too busy. If you're serious about fishing, here's the beauty of fishing. I don't care if you're tall and skinny, short and fat, run fast, run slow. I don't care. You can be a good angler. You can't do it by asking somebody an hour before you go fishing where the fish are. Take a half hour, find those three or four good resources and every night for a half hour, 45 minutes, look through them. Figure out where the fishing is. Figure out what, how deep of water. Figure out what color lures are working. Figure out how fast guys are going. Get all those little pieces of information. They're there. Then you add some of the stuff that we have at our resource center at teachingfishing.com with wind and waves and current. You add all that together, you should have a pretty good idea where to go fishing on Saturday. So if you're struggling with your fishing, it's your fault. You're not spending enough time finding some good information. Because one thing I know about fishermen, and you know it too, because you hang around anglers, if somebody catches fish, what do they want to do? Tell somebody. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's never a shortage of, of fishing information out there. So find a couple of websites, find a couple of Facebook pages that you trust, get on those, watch them every day. Pay attention to what's happening. You're going to catch a lot more fish every time you go fishing. Awesome. Lance Valentine. Right. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. Appreciate it.